Thanks for dropping by and welcome to Solve Crime series, Caught After Death, where we will profile criminals who were positively identified for crimes they committed after they died. In 2018, California law enforcement found incredible success sending DNA of an unknown murder and assault suspect to a public genealogy and genetics research website. In short order, they were able to narrow down the genetically close relatives of the suspect and eventually to the suspect himself. After surreptitiously gathering DNA from the man, it ended up being a match and they arrested Joseph D'Angelo, also known as the Golden State Killer, for 12 murders and over 45 assaults. As you can imagine, this caused cold case detectives worldwide to jump into action attempting to solve decades-old unsolved murders. Michael Sumter terrorized the city of Boston in the late 60s through the mid-70s. Sumter had a lengthy record with many sexual assault charges, but no murders. While serving a 15-year sentence for a 1975 assault of a Boston woman, he was released eventually to hospice care and died of cancer in 2001. In 2018, with the help of reverse DNA and forensic genealogy, the brutal truth was revealed what Michael Sumter really was, a cold-blooded killer. Thankfully, three families finally have closure on who killed their loved ones 50 years ago. The problem is that these families will never see Sumter pay for his crimes. He'll never hear a heart-wrenching or angry victim's impact statement. He will never be formally charged, tried, convicted, sentenced, and served prison time for taking their loved ones away from them. All because he was caught after death. This is Solve Crimes. At 12.30 a.m. on January 7, 1969, 24-year-old Jane Britton, a Near Eastern archaeology graduate student at Harvard University, left a neighbor's apartment in Cambridge, Massachusetts. She was headed to her own apartment nearby. The next day, her boyfriend and classmate, James Humphreys, tried calling her several times after she uncharacteristically didn't show up for an exam that morning. Jane didn't answer the phone. Concerned, he went to her apartment and encountered a horrific scene. Lying face down on her own bed, Jane had been bludgeoned to death and assaulted. Nothing was taken and no one in the vicinity saw anything. Jane's death attracted national attention because her father, J. Boyd Britton, was an administrator at nearby Radcliffe College, a private women's liberal arts school in Cambridge. Curiously, her body had been sprinkled with red ochre, a mixture of ferric oxide, clay, and sand used in ancient burial sites of multiple civilizations, including indigenous Australians as far back as 40,000 years ago. That odd fact led police to think that a fellow student or teacher from Harvard's archaeology department was responsible. Ultimately, investigators were unable to find any viable suspects from Harvard. Another oddity was that a man had confessed to assaulting and killing a woman in the same building six years earlier in 1963, but he was apprehended on October 27, 1964. That man was Albert DeSalvo, better known as the Boston Strangler. For a time, it was speculated that there could have been a second Boston Strangler who was responsible for the Britain murder, but the case eventually went cold. In November 2018, just two months before the crime's 50th anniversary, Cambridge Police and the Middlesex County District Attorney's Office announced that they had identified a suspect in the case through DNA, Michael Sumter. To date, it is the oldest case that Middlesex County law enforcement has ever solved. None of those victims, including Jane Britton, are believed to have known or had any previous relationship with Mr. Sumter. After the announcement, Jane's brother, Reverend Boyd Britton, said, A half century of mystery and speculation has clouded the brutal crime that shattered Jane's promising young life and our family. As the surviving Britton, 
I wish to thank all those, friends, public officials, and press, who persevered in keeping this investigation active. Most especially, State Police Sergeant Peter Sennett. The DNA evidence match may be all we ever have as a conclusion. Learning to understand and forgive remains a challenge. Ellen Rutchick, the second oldest child of Naomi and Philip Rutchick, grew up in St. Paul, Minnesota's Highland Park neighborhood. She graduated in 1966 from Highland Park Senior High School and from the University of Minnesota with a degree in American Studies in 1970. Corey Rutchick, the youngest sibling, was 15 when her sister was killed. She described Ellen as extroverted, beautiful, vibrant, intelligent, with a very large personality and a lot of friends. She had a lovely singing voice and was involved in choirs in high school, her sister said. After she graduated from college, Ellen Rutchick worked at a local hotel and moved to Boston in August 1971. She was trying to figure out what to do. Graduate school was a possibility. Ellen Rutchick found work at the Colonnade Hotel in Boston, where she did event planning. On the night of January 5, 1972, Rutchick left a girlfriend's apartment and walked 10 minutes to her Beacon Street apartment. When she didn't show up for work on January 6th, someone went to her apartment to check on her. After Ellen was murdered in a Boston apartment 38 years ago, her family chose not to focus on the young woman's death, but to remember her in life. 38 years after authorities found Ellen Rutchick partially clothed and strangled with an electrical cord in her Back Bay apartment, police said that they had cracked the case, one of an increasing number of old crimes solved with new forensic methods. Using DNA matching technology, Cold Case Squad investigators identified Michael Sumter as the suspect in the 1972 slaying of the 23-year-old secretary. 24-year-old Westport, Connecticut native Mary Lee McLean had moved to Boston in 1971 after graduating from DuPont University, a private college in Greencastle, Indiana. She was a secretary at social agency the Alcohol Safety Action Program on Federal Street. Mary lived in a modest upstairs apartment at 140 Beacon Street in the Beacon Hill area of Boston. In the early morning hours of December 12, 1973, Mary was assaulted and had died of brutal asphyxiation. She was found in her bed at 8 a.m. that morning by her roommate, Sally Romer. It's been 40 years and it's just haunted me my whole life, wondering who did this to her. Kathy McLean. Cold case cops, working with the help of a federal grant, began probing McLean's death anew in 2010. They compared DNA evidence from the case to genetic profiles in a federal database. Sumter's genetic profile came up as a match in May, and investigators re-interviewed witnesses. When they found McLean had no way of knowing Sumter, and they matched his MO to the other cases, they knew they had their man. Michael Sumter was a career criminal. He started as a 19-year-old getting arrested in 1965 for purse snatching. Based on DNA evidence and arrest records, it is believed that he was most active between 1968 and 1975. Forensic DNA tests on the sample discovered at the crime scene didn't initially get a hit in CODIS when it was submitted in 2004. Authorities hoped that forensic technology would one day be advanced enough to generate a complete profile of the murderer. It did, but it took some time. In 2005, Boston PD's Unsolved Murder Squad had reopened the Ellen Rutschick case at the urging of Ellen's relatives, who knew there was forensic material from the murderer. Five years later, in 2010, they got a hit in the CODIS database, and it was revealed that Michael Sumter was responsible for Ellen's death. Sumter had been dead for nearly nine years at that time. On October 18, 2012, police announced that they had linked the unsolved murder of Mary McLean to Michael Sumter, 11 years too late. Authorities had kept evidence from the crime scene under laboratory conditions. It paid off. Amateur sleuths tried for years to figure out who killed Jane Britton, the popular Harvard grad whose death in 1969 was still a mystery. There were plenty of theories sent to the Boston PD over the years. They chatted about it on Reddit and other forums. Some were even convinced their theory about a certain suspect was absolutely accurate. They were all wrong.
In 2018, a fresh look at the DNA from the Britton case was analyzed. Middlesex County investigators announced on November 21st of 2018 that they finally had a match. Michael Sumter. It took new tools, namely DNA analysis and forensic genealogy, to finally put the puzzle together. Investigators tracked down Sumter's brother, who cooperated with authorities by giving them a DNA sample. It ruled out Sumter's brother and confirmed that Michael Sumter had committed the ultimate crime. The Britton case was the oldest cold case solved by Middlesex County prosecutors. It took just shy of 50 years to finally close the files. Sumter died of cancer on August 10, 2001. He had been released from prison and placed in hospice care at Lemuel Shattuck Hospital Correctional Unit in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts. He never paid the price for taking the lives of at least three young women that we know of. It's certainly possible that there are unsolved murders that police either didn't find DNA evidence at the time, they failed to properly store it, or it simply hasn't been run through the CODIS database yet. What do you think? Do you think Michael Sumter only committed these murders? Or do you think that he got away with even more? Thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, and especially subscribe to the Solve Crimes channel for more on this case and more true crime content. This is Solve Crimes.